My name's Philip Cohen. I'm a chemical engineer in training. Uh, I've worked in industry for a majority of my career, but then moved to become a civil servant. Uh, my current role is uh, predominantly industrial decarbonisation, uh, looking at um, managing uh, an innovation programme. Bayes is looking at the you know, industrial strategy, the, the benefits of doing things like the green growth, but also looking at how we can decarbonise our energy system or, and our other systems. For the last six years, we've been, you know, our carbon has been going down. Uh, there was a report out today from the um, Carbon Brief, and they're saying over the last six years we've cut. The government haven't put their analysis out for the last five couldn't govern in the last five, last five years we've managed to cut our carbon intensity. Because of our move away from coal, and the move away from coal has happened a lot quicker than we ever anticipated, uh, we've reached those targets reasonably comfortably. The low hanging fruit's been done, and now it's we're starting to have to tackle the hard stuff. That's why there's been a lot more focus on industry. Industry was always seen as being very hard to, to actually meet the challenge. So very, very difficult to actually decarbonise industry. And I think um, we focused on power a lot. So we didn't necessarily develop all the policies and the policies aren't quite there yet, but certainly with the industrial cluster mission, one of the key things is how do we get industry? How do we lower the cost? We wouldn't let ever try and leave industry behind, and we support them, and we understand, you know, the focus is on the near-term future. But ultimately, um, the future relies on us being able to find a route to help them decarbonise. Um, whether that is sticking on a CCS, whether it's um, fuel switching to hydrogen. Uh, or electrifying, these all have quite large implications to industry. And they, whilst it isn't five years away, it is 10 years away, it's 15 years away. And so they need to start to engage to think what impact that has on their business and the long-term viability of their business. Um, because ultimately the carbon price is gonna go up. The carbon price hasn't been really, it's quite low at this moment or relatively low, if that, when that starts ratcheting up, which people believe it will do, um, through the 2020s, it's going to have to start, it's going to start to impact businesses more and more and more. And if they haven't planned for that, it's going to be really tough. Uh, certainly for innovation, because that's where we need support from industry. There's no point doing innovation if industry would just not be prepared to do. Uh, if there was no, uh, at the end of it, um, you know, there was, at the end goal wasn't, you know, industry didn't pick up. So we're wasting taxpayers' money if we don't work with industry to make sure that it's something that they may, not necessarily they have to pick up, but it gives them an option. We have to cut carbon. Our law says, the Climate Change Act says we have to cut carbon by 80% by 2050. That is, as I said, it's expensive to do, but there's also opportunities. So producing new products that can help you meet it. So the offshore wind, which Denmark, um, the, the Danish government put a punt on, uh, they took a risk, they backed it, when other industries weren't necessarily, other countries weren't necessarily backing it. And now we import lots of that technology. You know, we a huge amount of our, you know, uh, our development of our new offshore wind comes from Denmark. It's because they backed it, took a, you know, they, they saw it as a potential opportunity. They saw it as an opportunity for them, but also as the, uh, I'm guessing, as an export opportunity. And now they've got a very strong industry in that area. That That is, um, but that, you know, we're, we've got so far we have to come down. I mean, we were discussing earlier, saying to knit the fourth carbon budget, fifth carbon budget, there is large drops that we are in terms of emissions that we have to achieve. And it, it's only through the development of new technologies that we can actually start to achieve those or 
from use of technologies and you know building up the, the ability to use the existing technologies can we get to those targets. And once we get there, then we can sell that technology. We can sell that knowledge abroad and that gives us a you know it, it's a huge opportunity as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I think you know rice is a is a good start and it's you know it properly is a an example that would be good to roll out further across other, uh, you know, other universities, tie-ups with industry, you know, in an industrial landscape testing these technologies because it's a, it's a hard environment. There, there are opportunities as long as people are willing to change and I think that is going to be the main challenge of we like the way we do things currently. Um, and we've got to be open to change.